Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for combat! Fighting out of the blue corner, this man is a professional Muay Thai fighter that has transitioned into MMA over the last four years. He stands at 166 centimeters tall and weighs in at 62.4 kilograms. He has a professional MMA record of five wins and three losses. From the USA and representing MVP Jim, it's Ben Nguyen! <laughs> Fighting out of the red corner, this man is representing your Singapore. He is from the legendary Sityatong Muay Thai Gym and a professional fighter with over 31 Muay Thai victories. He stands at 166 centimeters tall and weighs in at 63.6 kilograms. Fighting out of Evolve MMA Gym, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Shaolin Sityatong! Martial Combat 7, the first bout of the evening. It's the USA against Singapore. Ben Nguyen of the United States in the white and grey trunks against Chavalit Sidyotong, based in Singapore. And as Ray was uh, highlighting for us, it will be interesting to see how an extremely experienced Muay Thai fighter makes the transition to the world of mixed martial arts. This is his debut. Ben, having fought MMA since 2003, um, is predominantly a striker. I mean, if you look, 90% of his victories have come by either KO or TKO. So it's going to be really interesting to see. Is he going to try to stay on the feet, or is he going to take it to where I would assume he'd have the advantage having trained seven years in mixed martial arts and bring it down to the mat? Well, standing up, they're both... Orthodox in stance, leading with their left hand. Just sounding each other out in these early seconds, getting a feel for the ring. The first strike of the contest comes from Ben. With his right leg there, just slapping the left leg of Sidio Tong. Retaliation. Tip for tap. Slightly high that time. First punch of the night thrown from Sidio Tong, a right hand. Chavalot doing the stalking here, just backing Ben down into, his, into the cage. I'd like to see Ben try to assert himself, especially going against somebody with so much fight experience. One of the things is you don't want to let him dictate the pace of the fight. Good single leg here by Ben. His head's on the inside. What he needs to do is he needs to look to turn the corner, meaning he needs to look to advance to the right. Here you see he's got the takedown. Chavalet's on his back. Um, so now we're going to get to see what type of ground game he has. Stuck here in the half guard, meaning he has his left leg in between bends. But it's a loose half guard. He's controlling the head, and what he really needs to do is he needs to use that right arm and start looking for the underhook. That choke isn't really doing much. Ben frees himself there clearly. Um, now what Ben needs to do is he needs to try to advance position. He's in the half guard. He needs to maintain that underhook and look to try to drive to the mount up against the cage wall this time. Any advantage for either fighter to use that cage, Ray? Uh, well, you know, it depends on strategy. Uh, you can hear Shatri, Sidi Atong in the corner, basically telling his fighter to lock him down, hold him down in hopes of a stand-up. Ben quickly transitions to mount, though, and now that strategy is not going to work, unfortunately. Um, Thai fighter can try to use his feet on the fence here and try to use that as an ability to bridge over. But if he doesn't have any real jiu-jitsu techniques from here, it's going to become evident rather quickly. He's got an overhook on the arm, which is breaking down the posture a bit, making those strikes a lot less effective. But he's still mounted. And obviously, whenever I've got mount, I'm running down those elbows, I'm running down those hammer fists, and there's not much I can do to escape the position. And there they come, the right and left hands. These will be point scoring. 
Ben's looking at Flurry here, hoping maybe that the ref will stop the fight. I mean, if the fighter stops intelligently defending themselves, meaning all they're doing is covering up, at that point is when the referee will stop the fight. Um, obviously, at any point in time, if the fighter feels like they've taken too much damage, they still have the option of tapping out. Three taps on the side of the mat or on the fighter that they're competing against signifies, I would like to give up. Uh, same thing as in boxing when somebody throws the towel into the ring. Big difference from boxing is you're not only seeing fists making contact here, but elbows as well, particularly brutal. And uh, when Sidotong gets up from this position, it'll be interesting to see what his face looks like. Ben doing a good job of maintaining position. He's not really looking for any submissions here. He had a soft armbar attempt, but for the most part, he's just maintaining control. Um, this is an easy round to score. If he stays here, you know, this makes it an easy 10-9 round. Maybe in some judges' eyes, a 10-8. I wouldn't quite go that far, but if it's a dominant round for either one of the fighters, um, then obviously the score could be a 10-8. Yeah, you were educating me earlier, Ray, about uh, how it's so difficult not to score a round in your favor if you're in this dominant position for uh, any material length of time. And certainly, Ben has dominated in that upright position. And there's plenty of punches and elbows going in there. Chavalit Sidyot Tong has taken quite a bit of punishment in the last 90 seconds. And there is a turnaround. Ben transitioning to the arm bar though. Um, he's doing a good job of maintaining. He's trying to extend that arm and the TIE fighter is showing great toughness in being able to roll out of the position back up to his feet with exciting delight from the crowd's cheers. Follows up with a good kick but I can see the Sidya Tong is cut. It looks like it's right between the eyes there. Let's see if I can get a closer look at that. It does seem to be, it does seem to be where the wound is right between the eyes there. Spin back in on the single leg, but the TIE fighter does a good job of sprawling to defend. From here, the corner's trying to tell him to back away, force him to stand back up, which is exactly what he does. Good job of listening to his coach. And what a good comeback from Sid Tong. Clearly the aggressor in the last 30, 40 seconds. In with the kick there that was probably just parried away. But what a good comeback. I mean, he was on the receiving end for the greater part of that round, and I guess, Ray, difficult not to score it for Ben Nguyen. Well, definitely a good comeback by the TIE fighter from City of Tong. But, obviously, if you're able to maintain mount, that's controlling where the fight takes place. And he's also landed the more devastating strikes from that position. So, it would be a clear 10-9 round for me. Uh, Chaviat did a good job of maintaining himself in the fight and getting back up to the feet, but in no means would I have him ahead on the round. This is where the point scoring work was done in the mounted position and then raining the punches down. Then Yuya taking a sip of water from the bucket there. You think they could find him a cup? There's a bit of a disorganization going on in the City of Tong corner. Sorry, in the New Yen corner. They've spilt a bucket of ice on the canvas. They've got they've got their fighter drinking from the bucket. All a bit disorganized. I beg your pardon, that's been Shavalit Sidiot Tong's corner. My apologies to everybody concerned. And the corner having to tidy up the ice there. So obviously, we don't want any ice on the canvas. That could be quite lethal for the fighters. Now, with round two about to begin, as I said, I would expect Shavalit to come out a bit more aggressive. Now he's got that first round jitters out of the way. Um, as, again, as this has been his first MMA fight, I'm sure he was a bit nervous. Um, but with all the experience that he has from Muay Thai, uh, I'd. I would expect for him to come out in round two a lot more aggressive, looking to finish the fight on the feet. George Shaw having to do a little bit of extra work. Wouldn't usually be expected to uh, clean up after the corner men, but had to do a good caretaker job there. And we're underway in round two. Now, I wouldn't expect to see Ben standing too long here. I'd like to see him quick, with a quick flurry on the feet, straight into that single leg. He's found success. Two out of two of his takedown attempts have been completed. So... Go back to what's working. Don't try to fix it. Let's see if we can get you an update on the state of that cut. Overhand right. Forehead. Overhand right, right into the double leg. Clean transition. That's exactly what I was talking about. Don't waste your time on the feet. He's looking to pass the half guard, maybe even to mount if he can. He's got that control of the leg. He's trying to pass that leg underneath his body. If Ben's able to do that, that'll give him an adventurous position.
Sijia Tong looks like he's just trying to wait for that split second, that window where he can perhaps get back to his feet. But Ben is so close to him. Well, there he is. Made, made it in the end, but he was standing over him so close that he just wasn't giving him that opportunity. Now, here Ben needs to go back to that overhand right, straight into that double or single leg. He's had so much success with that. You're three for three on your takedown attempts. Don't stand with the Muay Thai fighter from Thailand. Good sprawl displayed there by the City Atong fighter. Oh, oh, oh. oh, what a kick. Down he goes. Clean contact with the right leg. But Ben pops right up again like a spring chicken and still taking punishment. A little bit dazed. Still attacking. But the big advantage for Sidney Now Tom there now. he was a downed opponent. You cannot kick to the head of a downed opponent. With his foot on the mat and his knee on the mat, referee John Sharp quickly steps in to offer the warning. But obviously the momentum has changed here. Ben is ankle diving, chasing after that takedown on the single leg. But the TIE fighter does a good job of just backing out, forcing him to stand back up. Yeah, by ankle diving, as Ray said, just looking for a little bit of time to clear his head. But again, that very useful kick to the legs that has seen him collapse two or three times now. Following it up with a kick to the head. And how this fight has turned. Elbows and forearms to the head. And the referee has called it a day. My, my, what a turnaround. He struggled somewhat in that first round. But now his corner men come in knowing that he's turned this one around in spectacular, somewhat explosive fashion. Now this is a very monumentous victory here for Martial Combat. This is the first Thai national to win inside of the Martial Combat cage. Obviously with Ronda Somdet, M16, having won the Shudo Lightweight Championship, maybe this is the next generation of the Thai fighters transitioning into the sport of MMA we see here. gentlemen with two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in round number two your winner by way of TKO referee stoppage due to strikes the winner in the red corner shall it sit Javelin, Sidio Tong. Just getting dressed here. There's an awful lot of garments that need to be put on. Perhaps we could have a chat with you. Your debut, you must be pretty pleased. We happy here. We happy. Yeah. First time I fight, first time we happy. Anyone? Muay Thai, you've had well over 40 contests. This was your debut in mixed martial arts, which do you prefer? Uh -huh. I, like, I like Muay Thai, but... <laughs> <laughs> I like Muay Thai, oh, okay, okay, good. Uh, different, different, different style, yeah. Muay Thai, okay, different. Uh. Very different, but it didn't seem a problem for you to adapt. Very entertaining start to the evening. Many congratulations, well done. Uh, thank you. Bob, thank you, see you Tom. Thank you, PT, thank you. Rafael, thank you. Joe. Uh, thank you, Joe. Oh, thank you, Milo. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, members. Singapore, I love. Members, Singapore, I love. Singapore.